Hey everybody, here's the weekly update. A uh, couple of amendments I just want to talk to you about. Unfortunately, they didn't make it, uh, they, they weren't what's called made in order, so nobody got to vote on these, but I offered them and I argued for them. One was uh, on, uh, dealt with combating uh, female genital mutilation, or FGM. Uh, I would have taken funding from uh, some of the UN peacekeeping mission and applied it to uh, fighting gender-based violence, especially and particularly FGM. The second dealt with school safety and shifted funding from the management account, uh, shifted that to the safe schools and citizen education account. And just to let you know, because you might not know what that means, the account includes programs like school safety, national activities, and the Project School Emergency Response to Violence, or Project Serve. Uh, the amendment supported efforts to train school-based mental health professionals, and one of the profound things I found when I visited schools is when I asked them what else they needed, many of them told, told me that they needed mental health counselors in the schools to deal with things that their students were going through, but they didn't have the resources for it. So that was my attempt to just try and fit the need with the, uh, uh, with the resource. And uh, of course, like I said, neither one of those were found in order, so nobody got to vote on them. Uh, moving forward, we're still uh, doing appropriations last week. We were doing this thing called a mini bus, and 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 if you're you know if you didn't hear that we talked about the budget is the top line spending number, so we're supposed to agree to a budget, and you're not supposed to spend any more than that, more than that, and then we do appropriations bills, which there are twelve of them, and that's where uh, you decide the priorities and how much to spend up to that level, up to that budget level. First thing is there is no budget. Uh, majority party Nancy Pelosi they haven't passed a budget. And you might say, well, who cares about that? Because you guys do what you want to anyhow. And unfortunately, you're somewhat right about that. But the big deal is, is that um, without a budget, we just, we really go over uh, the spending because there's no constraint at all. And we're, I think, about $176 billion over last year's spending right now. So that a budget tries to constrain you. We don't have any of that. So we're spending even more. And the second thing is, without a budget, that thing called sequestration kicks in. And if you remember from not too long ago, sequestration, sequestration automatically ratchets down spending in certain places. And the place it most affects is the United States military. And so without a budget, sequestration will kick in. But with that, um, one of the big things that we did was uh, is get a, a hydroelectric amendment uh, passed. And you got to remember, I'm in the minority, and uh, it's hard to get anything. It's just hard to get things passed when you're in the minority. The majority party doesn't want to pass your bills; they want to pass their bills. But I got a bill on hydroelectric power and and how we how we fund different uh, alternative energies. And it's been my contention that hydro is is reliable every single day of the year. It's clean, it's renewable, it's environmentally sound, but it doesn't get the uh, the attention that wind and solar does. And so anyhow, uh, I was able to get a unanimous support uh, for this amendment. And, and people also say sometimes that as Republicans, uh, we have a hard time you know, getting things accomplished and, and we all have, have to have it our way and so on and so forth. So I just wanna remind you that this is the second time in six months that have gotten a bill passed uh, as a member of the minority and, or a piece of legislation, this was an amendment. So that's really, really good news uh, for all of us. Uh, this week we're gonna consider, uh, this week coming up, another minibus and we talked about when you what don't- What does minibus mean? When you don't do the appropriations process, so we have the budget and the 12 appropriations bills, when we don't do that process of each appropriation bill, say energy and water, homeland security, uh, those are standalone appropriation bills, and we're supposed to debate what are we spending the money on and how much. When we don't do that process, they put a bunch of them together. That's called a minibus. So they put five or six appropriations together. What happens when they do that? Because it's that that's that, that's not an omnibus. A omnibus would be the whole thing. So this is just a portion of it. But what happens is they put a whole bunch of them together, and a whole lot of bad policy gets in there because these are things that wouldn't pass on their own. But because they're all lumped in with everything else, if you don't vote for all of it, you don't vote for any of it. And then people say, "Well, you voted against Homeland Security funding," and that's right. how the, that's how it goes. Yeah. So we're doing uh, we're doing another mini bus. Um, Last week was Department of Defense, State and Foreign Ops, Energy and Water, Labor, Health and Human Services, and Education. And that was over a trillion dollars. Uh, this week we're gonna do Commerce, the Commerce Department, Justice, 
So that's the Department of Justice, Science, Agricultural and Rural Development, Food and Drug Administration, Interior, Environment, Milica Military Construction, and Veteran Affair, Veterans Affairs, Transportation and Housing and Urban Development. So they're going to pile all those into one minibus. And of course, again, it breaks the, the statutory caps on spending. Here's a couple things I want you to know coming into, uh, into this week. Uh, first of all, it, it's a 10% increase in discretionary. That's not mandatory. That's money that we don't have to spend, but we decide to over, to th uh, over last year's level. 10% increase. So that's why you have a budget, so you don't do that. Here are some other important, important points. It prohibits funding for a wall or any barrier along the southern border. It prevents the president from moving funds to address a national emergency. It brings the detainees from Gitmo... Guantanamo Bay, the terrorist detainees that are there, into the United States. To do what with? Where to to, to be incarcerated oh. in prisons around your town or anybody's town. It institutes uh, some pretty radical environmental policies relating to greenhouse uh, gas emissions caused by livestock. So livestock have flatulence, and this is part of the Green New Deal being put into this, uh, so, this, uh, this spending bill. Uh, also has taxpayer money allotted for the uh, for attorneys for uh, uh, immigrants crossing the border illegally. So your tax dollars are going to pay for their legal representation, mm. and it prohibits a citizen que citizenship question in the 2020 census. So obviously, I have some some concerns so, about. So that means. We can't ask you if you're a United States citizen. To well, that, that's the question. Of should that be considered in the census or not? And it's before the Supreme Court right now. It's been done for many, many years. Uh, it has recently, in the last couple terms, been stopped. The administration, This administration wants to put the question back on the census questionnaire. And, it's, and, and of course, that's been challenged, so it's at the Supreme Court level right now. So, yeah. but, this, but this bill would... Regardless of what the Supreme Court said, this bill, if, if, if it passes and were signed into law, would block that question from being on Which the census Which would mean body. that if you're not a United States citizen, you get to vote in our elections. Well, what it means is you're counted. You're counted. So remember, citizens, when we're counting people for the census, we're counting them so we know where they live because that's how money is allocated for different things like education, for roads, for a whole host of things. And so even though you might not be here legally, you are counted and then your community, because you're there, receives more tax dollars because of that. And so okay. we just wanna know, we wanna know who's a citizen and who's not. You still, this, the money might actually still flow where there's still more people, but then the question then becomes, should they be voting? And if we know how many people live in a particular min municipality, and how many are citizens and how many are not, when the vote totals come in, we have an idea if people are voting right. illegally, right? Yeah. So that's, that's part of it. Um, so among other things, uh, you saw the tensions escalating with Iran, and I want to... Okay, everybody, we're back. Sorry, technical difficulty, but we want to just get through this. So we were talking about tensions with Iran. I will tell you that in my opinion, and it might not be anybody else's, but in my opinion, we are responding to Iran's malevolent activities. Uh, as a person who's been privileged to wear the uniform, I lament, and it, uh, it disturbs me greatly that Iran is responsible for many horrific things against American citizens, not the least of which is the unpleasant and untimely deaths of 500 American soldiers and service members serving in Iraq at the hands of a thing called an EFP, an explosive form penetrator, which was made in Iran, which was made by Iran and sent into Iraq. These are bad folks. The regime, when I'm talking about Iran, I'm talking about the leadership there. There are a lot of Iranian people that are, that are wishing to breathe free, but the leadership there is, they're a totalitarian theocratic regime. Uh, we are responding to them. The sanctions are, are having an effect. They are lashing out. They are invoking a response. They shut down a $130 million drone of ours that was in international airspace. And, uh, and I think they were trying to see if the president would attack them militarily. I think the president chose the right course of action. We have a lot of tools in the toolbox as the United States of America. I think you're going to see more sanctions. There might be other kinds of attack that we might find out at some future time happened in response to this. 
And what Iran, I think, was trying to do was increase their, their bargaining position and also change the rhetoric where people on the ground, potentially during a military strike by the United States, would have been killed and they would have said it was, uh, it was not a proportionate response to the short shoot down of a drone to take, uh, to take the lives of, of combatants or others. And so I think the president made the right choice. I think we're on the right track. And uh, to try and rein Iran in, and I don't think this president, and certainly I don't want any of us to have to go to a war, but that go to war with Iran. But that doesn't mean we accept their malevolent behavior. Well, that means we do something about it, but we use the tools that we have, and we use them very uh, strategically and tactically. So that's where that is. I also want to talk to you about something that's happening right in the state house, which I've been working on when I left there, and continue to working on. Uh, by urging them to continue, but also working on at the federal level, which is this FGM uh, female genital mutilation at the federal level. What happened is, is uh, um, over time, I've been urging the state to pass their own bill because law enforcement constitutionally really happens as a state and local level. And while I failed in other terms, in this term, they moved it through the House. The bill recently moved through the Senate, the exact same bill. It's Representative Tom Mertz's bill, and I don't know the number of it off the top of my head, but I thank him. I thank Tom, a former colleague, for working on this. That bill moved through the Senate, and so we're expecting and hoping for uh, a signature by the governor to make this horrific, barbaric practice illegal in Pennsylvania, and that will leave, I think, about 17 or 18 states left to go, and I'm working on them as well. But the good news is, and I sent a letter to, to Governor Wolf some time ago asking him to consider signing this. The good news is, is that, assuming this gets signed, is that horrific, barbaric practice will no longer be illegal in Pennsylvania, and there will be penalties and punishment for those engaged in it and, uh, and betray and abandon and abuse. It's child abuse and abuse their, their daughters. And so, uh, one last thing. It's summertime, there's a lot going on in your communities, and, and I hear from people, hey, I, I'm not seeing you at this thing or that thing during the week, and, and I just got to tell you, we are in session a lot, as we should be, or we are in D.C. working, and I'm required to be there to vote, to vote, that's what you elected me for, so if you don't see me at your local festival on a Wednesday afternoon or something like that, it's because I'm in Washington, D.C., and so every chance we get, we're in the district, we had a long weekend with a whole lot of events, but when I'm required to... I'm going to be in D.C. voting on your behalf. And so with that, if you wonder where I am, uh, that's probably where I am. So anyhow, I hope you have a great week. God bless you, and I'll talk to you soon.